Tobacco Theory is biochemical equations for tobacco termination. Cover the patients and my gluteal deal. The contents of tobacco theory is for educational purposes only. It is not an alternative to professional medical advice. Always seek somebody at least thinks they know what they're doing. This material is freely available for those seeking to be drug free. Drug addiction is a biochemical warfare and we need to conquer. Welcome to Tobacco Theory, presenting the explanation for the biological and chemical situations that require medical manipulation for tobacco termination. Tobacco theory is a point of view about what is going on in the world of addiction. It is an explanation based on observation and reasoning of why so many are sucked into drugs. And by far the most dangerous drug in our solar system, especially laced with lethal additives and smoke or chew, is tobacco. Tobacco delivers a drug to the brain called nicotine. To be free from tobacco addiction, your brain needs to know how to fix itself. And to do this, we will explore the equations to balance life situations and the solution to stop the pollution. Many will not be able to stop their tobacco addiction and will smoke or dip forever and ever. And if that be the case, well, think about it. The smoker should search for medication and healthier lifestyle to counteract these diseases of addiction. And this will be continued and discussed later on in the story here. Tobacco theory is a backstage pass to understand how we can fix the brain or at least get it running a little bit better. Tradition, not addiction. Tobacco, one of the wonders of plant life. Native peoples of the Americas grew and harvested the tobacco plant. The resulting product was used for medicinal purposes and in religious ceremonies. Here's some raw tobacco. Smoking the leaves in a pipe or rolled in corn shucks has been a part of ancient ceremonial practices for centuries. The ancestors believed that their prayers rose with the tobacco smoke toward the heavens where the Creator dwelled. And these ancient beliefs and practices are still upheld in Indian country today. But respect for this sacred plant has been lost by the habitual use of smoking or chewing commercial tobacco laced with chemical additives. Intro to Tobacco Tobacco is not vitamin rich for your health. The important part of this production is to make clear that the tobacco empire laces cigarettes with wicked chemical additives that cause cancer and seduce you to smoke or dip more of their particular brand. And beware of the chemical warfare played on your life. It's time for a smoke break. B-R-A-K-E. Put the break on tobacco addiction. Just for a thought here, the real reason that dinosaurs became extinct. One human or has just died from a tobacco-related disease by the time you have read this. Hmm. Thank you, Nero. Let's look at some CDC data. Life loss from tobacco abuse, from males 13 years, females 14. Now let's look at that life expectancy wise. 73 down to 60 years old. Not cool. From 200 years of wars and conflicts, over 600,000 Americans were lost in battle. From two years of tobacco diseases, over 860,000 Americans have lost their lives. That's over a thousand per day.
We lose over 50,000 Americans just from secondhand smoke alone. There's a big debate about smoking in restaurants and bars. Some people argue that separate sections and filtration are enough to keep non-smokers safe from the harmful effects of secondhand smoke. It would be like having separate sections in a pool, peeing and non-peeing. Would you feel safe jumping in? Ah. Pretty disgusting, but so are heart and lung diseases caused by secondhand smoke. This is not against personal rights. It's for public health. Show your support to regulate smoking in public places. Deaths per year from tobacco abuse, we see more than that of alcohol, injuries, motor vehicle accidents, homicide, suicide, and drug abuse all combined. Something is wrong. Let's get genetic, chemical, and physical. To be drug free, we need to recognize what kind of neurological programs are smoking in one's brain. Just as some are born with the genetics for having diabetes or high blood pressure, it appears a drug addiction may run in the family as well. If your parents have it, you may get it, as genetic traits run in the genes. Many traits run in the genes. Hair, skin color, diabetes, cancer. A tendency toward drug addiction may be a genetic trait passed on from the parents. Another thought is the brain may be compromised by chemical or physical injury. Chemical damage may be from smoke and dope or a drug overdose. Drug abuse is like a hideous computer virus that reprograms the chemical equations in the brain. The earlier in life one uses drugs, the more damage it causes and the more difficult it becomes to stop. physical injury. I lost his ball cap. Physical brain injury may be from hitting your head in a motor vehicle accident. Now here, this guy has a good idea to wear his helmet. Brain injury can cause damage how one thinks, which may lead to drug addiction to tobacco, alcohol, street drugs, and such. For our next video segment, one must keep in mind, stupid is what stupid does. Hostage taker here escorting two of his captives out of the bank where he had held them for 12 hours had a plan, but so did the police. The plan to exchange the hostages for a motorcycle on which to make his getaway. The man claimed to have a hand grenade and had demanded money and drugs. Then, as he sped down a boulevard live on Spanish TV, an unmarked police car pulled into the biker's path. Hollywood couldn't have written what happened next better. The slow-mo replay shows the man making almost two complete revolutions and a very rough landing. After recent terrorist attacks, Spanish police are in no mood for leniency. This man picked the wrong time and the wrong way to try to support his drug habit. Mark Phillips, CBS News. The street is not sweet. The earlier in life one uses drugs, the deeper the hook is swallowed. Here is the largest marijuana bust in history, 105 tons. For some, drug abuse may have started from the street drug dealers who have lured multitudes into using or selling drugs. Some have been sucked or recruited in to the industry before puberty. The glamorous road of crime and drug dealing may lead into a rearing collision of reality and death. Some choose to live in the storm, while others are able to reform. Many of us have been hit hard with dysfunctional families, divorce, incarceration, death of family and friends, and physical or mental abuse, and live with these haunting memories from the womb to the tomb. 
Sometimes the brain short circuits into survival mode and starts reprogramming with new ideas on how to deal with life. Electricity in Harmony We are traveling over planet Earth. Looking down. Keep in mind, as electrical power travels throughout the city, brain cells transmit messages throughout the brain. As you can see the lightning storms there in the clouds below. Think about a lightning storm may cause a power outage and blackout an entire city. The brain may malfunction too. Following the, it happens, uh, physical or chemical injuries that black out part of the brain. Consider planet Earth from space at night looking down at the city lights from the USA. As you can see there, New Mexico. Now imagine how it would look when we short circuit part of the country, say the state of Tennessee with a power outage. Now we cannot see Tennessee. If the U.S. lost Tennessee, the country music capital of the world, the music dies. Visualize a power shortage would be seen from space showing which areas on Earth are blackened out. Likewise, we have the technology to see parts of the brain in action or not working at all. Gray matter matters. We know particular communities have supporting industries such as farming, mining, or fishing just as well. So do parts of the brain have special jobs to perform. We need a volunteer. Well, thank you, Jay. Appreciate it. Let's take a look at the brain, the coronal slice of the brain. Slicing it in a particular direction there, we now have a visualization. The brain is made of different kinds of nerve cells, gray and white matter. Under the microscope, some cells are gray cells, are the thinking cells, and are found in parts of the brain that help in muscle control, speech, seeing, memory, hearing, emotions, and behavior. The gray cells are like computers, telephones, and the television sets. White cells are the transmission cells. They relay messages throughout the brain. They are similar to the power and telephone lines and computer cables. Zoom into the brain microscopically. Let's get a visual of what's taking place. We see the white matter, the axons, and the gray matter, the neurons. When there's a physical or chemical injury, something takes place. Street drugs, meth, marijuana and such may damage the gray matter and alcohol and head injuries may damage the white matter. So research has shown gray matter and white matter matters. Reward on board. Here is the sagittal view of the brain with our knife slice. Different parts of the brain have special jobs to perform. Just as different parts of an engine, a starter, alternator, spark plugs and so forth, we have different parts of the brain that perform movement, sensation, judgment, pain, memory, vision, and coordination. And we have the reward pathway. When nicotine is absorbed, several areas of the brain are increased in chemical activity, a reward response. The reward pathway is one of the locations of the brain's drug craving and addiction. One of the chemicals that activate the reward pathway is called dopamine. Here's a smoker before, and then fire up the cigarette, the smoker after a dose of nicotine. When the smoker or dipper absorbs nicotine, the reward pathway is increased in activity. 
now, let's zoom in microscopically to see the synapse in action. We can see the white matter. The brain has these axons that transmit messages to different parts of the brain, like telephone lines, white matter. And now we're zooming in microscopically to the neuron, the gray matter. These are the neurons, the nerve cells of the reward pathway. The neuron has a special connection, a gap called synapse. Nicotine Fiend. Within seconds of inhaling cigarette smoke, a rush of nicotine travels into the brain, increasing chemical activity. This activity releases a norepinephrine and serotonin systems. Together, they enhance memory and concentration and decrease anxiety. Then the dopamine system is energized that calms down the withdrawal feelings and increases reward activity. The release of endorphins provide the pleasurable sensation. Smoke them if you got them. Balancing Act. Serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine are just a few of these neural chemicals that have a special job in the synapse to make it work right. If there are not enough chemicals, serotonin, norepinephrine, or dopamine in the synapse, then that part of the brain does not work correctly, like an electrical outage. This is called a chemical imbalance. Just as an engine needs oil to lubricate, gasoline to run, and water to cool the motor, the brain needs serotonin to lubricate, norepinephrine to run, and dopamine to cool the mind. Some receptor sites may be normal in chemical activity, then when one starts abusing tobacco, the nicotine agitates the neurons, causing the feeling of one being low of the needed chemicals. This is the origin of addiction. If the receptor site is low in serotonin and or norepinephrine or dopamine, then one may have problems with depression, being sad, anxiety, stressed out, or behavioral issues. Here's a balance in that with an equal amount of serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine. S N and D. Here we are, low in serotonin within the synapse. We don't see the S's within the serotonin, and thus we have a chemical imbalance and we may have problems with anxiety and or depression. Drug plugs. To increase the serotonin, we need to fix the chemical leak. Then the serotonin fills up inside the synapse and all is well. Medications that increase serotonin in the synapse one way or another are those like Prozac, Paxil, Lexapro, Zola, Effexor, among others. Medicines that increase serotonin may help in treatment of depression and or anxiety. Low on norepinephrine and dopamine now we're looking inside the synapse where we're short of norepinephrine and dopamine. When low on norepinephrine or dopamine, one may have problems with addiction, such as tobacco, drug abuse, and or depression. The drug of choice to chemically increase the norepinephrine and dopamine in the synapse of the brain is bupropion, well betrayed or Zyban, the smoking cessation pill. There are several other medications, drug plugs, that may return harmony to the synapse depending on the type of chemical imbalance. Dope to cope. Some are missing the ideal neurochemistry for a balanced peace of mind. This chemical imbalance may be restored with the right medication, 
education or consultation. If one has too much dopamine in the synapses, this may cause psychosis, giving symptoms of hallucination, delusions, agitation, disturbed thinking, bizarre behavior. This chemical imbalance of the brain is called schizophrenia. Smoke them if you got them. When taking excessive control prescription, narcotics, or street drugs, meth, or marijuana, this overdose of dopamine short circuits the gray matter and may cause mental disease. These drugs invade the brain and can cause substance-induced psychotic disorder. Some people feel comfortable and enjoy using tobacco. They would rather continue to feel good with it than feel like crap without. Many search for drugs to restore their chemical imbalance to calm the storm. Some have not found the right formula. Dope to cope. 20 subjects were tested. 10 received IV normal saline. That's just plain salt water. Had no effect at all. The other 10 received IV cocaine. Dope, I mean to the best, right? Think about it for some. Half enjoyed the cocaine and wanted lots more. The other half did not like and wanted to pull out the IV. They did not like how it felt. Some people have enough dopamine and do not want any more, while others need and seek to find their dope to cope. Per capita is one unit of population, average number of persons. Example, which state has the highest population percentage of people who own snowmobiles? Texas or Alaska? Go figure, Alaska. Which state has the lowest tobacco usage per capita in the country? Utah. Okay. Think about it. Which state now has the highest antidepressant prescriptions per capita in the country? Utah. Wonder why? We will get our dope to cope. Thank you, Nero. <laughs> Medications for situations. In review, nicotine stimulates the brain, activating the chemicals serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine. Some prescription drugs provide the same chemicals that our brain needs to function in harmony. One of these medications is called Zyban. It's the tobacco cessation pill. Zyban is also an antidepressant. When smoking or dipping tobacco, it is like taking an antidepressant pill, like Zyban, which is bupropion. So to wrap it up, you might say, get the right medication for your situation. Stop rolling, smoking, or dipping your antidepressants and anti-anxiety medications and get on the pill. Stop smoking your antidepressants and your anti-anxiety medications. Put the seeds out here and start taking the pill form. After all, that's what it's all about, a healthier approach. Test Quest. Smoking tobacco sucks the life from one's lungs. Street drugs may corrode and short circuit the brain, causing mental illness. Certain tests may show injury to the lung and brain and may provide information that can be used for treating these diseased situations. Such as a chest x-ray that may help us find diseases like pneumonia or cancer. Here's the heart. And there is someone with pneumonia. Pulmonary functions tests 
measures the lungs' breathing ability and disability. See in the brain. Let's talk about spec scans. A spec scan shows the activity of the brain and what parts are working or not. Infrared imaging shows the blood flow in the skin. To measure how smoking might already be making them different from one another, the twins volunteered to be tested at Lutheran Medical Center in Denver, Colorado. Becca got a chance to see how smoking just one cigarette affects her body. That will cause the skin temperature to drop. With each drag, the nicotine in the cigarette begins to constrict Becca's circulation. Infrared pictures of her hand show the changes instantly. You can see the blueness uh, occurring up in her index finger now. The temperature drop is quite significant already. In the time it takes to smoke it one continue. cigarette, Becca's hand turns from a healthy red to an icy blue. I notice we're even getting a little purple in the tips of your fingers, mm -hmm. which is down near the bottom of our scale. Now the non-smoker, if they would wiggle their hands, yeah, we know who it is. Check it out. Green shows the good blood flow. Blue shows the reduced blood flow. Nicotine slows down and constricts the blood flow to all organs and extremities. All extremities. Check it out. The blue areas of the nose shows a decrease in blood flow. Infrometrics. DNA and cancer. DNA. Molecules that transmit special information needed for living organisms to develop correctly. DNA is a who, when, where, how, and why. Who we are, what we are. Deep within the nucleus of every cell is a DNA telling the cell what to be when it grows up. Some of the tobacco chemical additives are carcinogens. They cause cancer. These carcinogens added to the tobacco and the nicotine alters the DNA cell expression resulting in cancer. Here's the normal lung, as you can see. Here is a cancerous lung. Additives also cause other devastating cellular changes that destroy life. Diseases of addiction. COPD, Chronic Obstructive Pulmonary Disease. Oxygen Flow. When smoke is inhaled, the oxygen level is lowered and the tar, nicotine, and additives are delivered to the lungs. Traveling into the lungs and into the future. As we can see here, 20 years, 40 years of smoking, causing devastation. COPD, chronic bronchitis, mucus from the lungs block the airways, causing continuous productive cough. The janitor in the lungs are on a smoke break, you might say, not cleaning up their mess. COPD, the other component is emphysema. The air sacs lose their expandability, causing one to be a little short of breath, you might say. And this little SOB will worsen over time to become a real pain in the rear SOB when one must carry oxygen just to breathe. Blood flow, which can cause problems with heart attacks and stroke, which is a brain attack. Here we have a rusty old water pipe. And inside the pipe, the rust blocks off the water flow to your sink or shower or whatever. Same thing takes place inside the arteries. Nicotine causes plaque or fat to invade the arteries, causing them to be blocked up, just like the rusty old pipe, blocking off the blood flow, such as in the heart. So here's a heart artery, and we can see that what happens when the artery gets plugged up, clogged off, it decreases and causes a 
decrease in blood flow to that heart muscle. When an artery through which blood flows to the heart is blocked off, that's when we have a heart attack. The muscle starts to die, and this is called a myocardial infarction. Here you see the heart, the good red tissue there. And on this model, you can see where there's damage, blackened. And here is the real thing. Symptoms of a heart attack are chest pain, shortness of breath, left arm pain, and sweating. One that is a smoker should be familiar with these symptoms because you're more likely to have problems with a heart attack. Be prepared. Know when to get to the emergency department. Stat. As soon as possible. Stroke. Brain attack. A stroke is when the blood flow to the brain is blocked off. The blood flow may be blocked off by the vessel being clogged up with a blood clot or with plaque. Accumulation of fat, you might think of it. The other type of stroke is when the vessel busts open and bleeds into the brain. A stroke blocks off blood flow to the brain, causing the brain cells in that area to lose oxygen and nutrients, and it starts to die. When brain cells die during a stroke, the part of the brain that is injured may not work again. It's like blowing a fuse. A stroke patient may lose brain function, such as vision, speech, memory, leg movement, on one side or the other. Stroke patients must get to the emergency department as soon as possible. Just as we have x-rays to show us if one has a broken bone, we have special x-ray cameras that can give us a picture, a scan of the brain. A CAT scan, same as a CT scan, shows what part of the brain is injured. If one is having a stroke or brain attack, get to the hospital as soon as possible, ASAP. Head case. Horizontal slice of the brain. Let's take another look at the brain here. Here we have a CAT scan of a patient presenting injury from a ruptured blood vessel of the brain. Let's take a closer look at this image. Let's zoom in to the injury. does have that appearance of Jay Leno, sort of. For those smoking meth, heads up, a ruptured blood vessel in the brain may be seen with methamphetamine use. Meth raises the blood pressure and or it causes the arteries to spasm and cramp up in the brain, which then explodes, you might say, and then causes a bleed, as you see inside of this patient's brain right here, one of my patients. There's a 28-year-old male who's a meth addict, right side of the brain injured from a hemorrhagic stroke that bled into the brain, causing left side arm and leg weakness. 28 years old. A hemorrhagic stroke is a ruptured blood vessel bleeding into the brain. That's what that image is. It's not really Jay Leno inside of that guy's brain. Ischemic stroke. The blood vessel is blocked off from the blood clots or fatty deposits, plaque. Nicotine causes plaque to clog up the blood vessels, and that's why we're talking about it right now. There are several street drugs and nicotine that can cause injury to the blood vessels, causing a stroke or a brain attack. A blown artery in the brain is like blowing a fuse in your home. Sometimes the power is out forever for that gray matter. That's what we're concerned about. It is much easier to cripple yourself. <clears throat> Respect the brain. Dr. Daniel Amen and the Amen Clinic work with a revolutionary brain imaging technique called SPECT that allows them to accurately see how the brain works. There are many people who are anxious or depressed or obsessive, prone to anger, they have attentional problems, and they thought their problems were 
all in their head, purely psychological. Uh, in the research that I've done with SPAC, uh, what we found is that these and many other problems are brain-based problems and that when we optimize the brain, um, their lives become better. Uh, we often say, you know, change your brain, change your life, and that's what we've seen. One must open the hood of a car to work on and find the engine problem. Just as well, a SPECT or PET scan of the brain opens up the hood of the skull and now we can see the top of the brain looking down on. We can see what's going on underneath the brain in three dimensions. A scan shows the brain's ability and or its disability. Gray matter matters. Here we have healthy brain, as you can see, compared to the damaged brain from drug injury. We're looking at drug injury from heroin. You can see the anomaly. Healthy drug-free brains at age 16 years old. Here spect images we will see of kids at 16 years old, and you can see what happens with the decrease in activity from methamphetamines. You can see it from, from alcohol. Yes. Marijuana. I wonder what mine looks like. Oh boy. Nevertheless, which brain do you want? Looking here, we can see what cocaine does to the brain. Inhalants. Inhalants are extremely dangerous and wicked. And of course, smoking tobacco. Well, the scans don't lie. What we find is that people who use drugs, who use alcohol, damages brain function. What we see is this overall decreased activity in the brain from, from substance abuse. But the good news is that if you stop using, your brain may get better. Um, we've seen a lot of healing take place in brains that have been damaged with drugs and alcohol. Research shows us drug abusers have problems in parts of the brain that provide judgment, learning, and memory. These areas of the brain are important in decision making. One of the decisions drug abusers lose is to remember to stop using drugs. They forgot to stop. They forgot to stop. The drug trap has been set over and over again and again. Pot or not? Two years of marijuana use at 16 years old. That was what my brain probably looked like. Marijuana, THC. There are findings that those who smoke pot in their teenage years are more likely to develop testicular atrophy and cancer at small testicles. Testicular atrophy, like a big dude with little balls. And also it causes decrease in gray matter cognitive ability, you have a lowered IQ. Mental disabilities. There is hope for the dope, medicinal marijuana, as a medication for certain diseases, not for developing brains and developing testicles as well. Brains and testicles. School of Hard Knocks. Damage axons, the white matter. We're going to talk about what takes place in a damaged brain. What happens when there's injury to the very connections between one brain and the other. When the head is clobbered, traumatized, the brain may be damaged by sharp parts of the skull that hold the brain in position, as you can see here. When the brain is injured, this concussion may cause depression, anger issues, and abusive behavior. Many fine drugs, such as nicotine, help calm down the storms of depression, frustration, and anger. Case study, 15-year-old student whose head case sheds light on this school of thought. From early 
childhood, he displayed severe be behavioral problems. He had been arrested, shoplifting, frequently cut schools, was defiant, raged with anger, and, and was just pissed off at the world. He smoked tobacco, pot, cocaine, and yet there is a rest of the story. His spec scan showed severe damage to his left prefrontal cortex, as you can see here. Very easy to, to perceive what's going on. When he was a child of 18 months old, he tripped and fell down a flight of stairs, injuring his head. His mother said afterwards, had a drastic change in his personal behavior and he was never the same. Bad trips and motor vehicle accidents or fights causing brain injury may just screw up your life for our life. Many are led to self-medicate, using tobacco or street drugs for one reason or another, be it depression or anxiety. Protect your head and brain. Wear a helmet, use goggles, use earplugs, buckle up. Protect your life. It is difficult to kill yourself. Much easier to cripple yourself. Cancerous corporations. Once European colonies were established in America, commercial trade with the Indians soon began. Metal goods, farming supplies, furs, and tobacco became the trade goods of colonial America. But the history of tobacco trade has proven that commercial tobacco companies are more concerned about their profits than the health and well-being of tobacco consumers. Imagine a business that made a product that killed up to one half of their best customers. It wouldn't kill its users suddenly, but slowly and insidiously through poisons that cause or exacerbate cancer, heart disease, strokes, and lung disease. Imagine that the companies knew their product was deadly and addictive, but kept manufacturing it anyway. Imagine that the company spent billions of dollars every year dying customers through advertising campaigns that hook new users, especially young ones, by making the product look fun, sexy, and inviting. Meet the cigarette. All of you touch on it, and just yes or no. Do you believe nicotine is not addictive? I believe nicotine is not addictive, yes. Mr. Johnson. Uh, Congressman, Cigarettes and nicotine clearly do not meet the classic definitions of addiction. There is no right. intoxication. We'll, we'll take that as a no. And the allegation that smoking cigarettes is addictive is part of a growing and disturbing trend that has destroyed the meaning of the term by ca characterizing virtually any enjoyable activity as addictive, whether it's eating sweets, drinking coffee, playing video games, or watching TV. Of course, the industry said that smoking is no more dangerous than eating Twinkies. Well, you read the back of the label of Twinkies, guess what you see? What coloring is used, flour, starch, sugars, and other. Turn over your pack of cigarettes, what do you see? You don't see any of it. This morning in your written statement and your oral statement, you compared cigarettes to coffee, tea, sweets, sugar, warm milk, cheese, chocolate, and Twinkies. That's quite a list. I'm struck by what I think is a calculated attempt to trivialize the devastating health impacts of your product. The difference between cigarettes and Twinkies and the other products you mentioned is death. Corporate Arsenal. Cigarettes are designed to deliver just the right dosage of the addicted drug nicotine to make it difficult to quit. But then, the tobacco companies make it more addictive by adding chemicals. Well, although some of these chemicals were found to be dangerous and cancerous, these additives were not removed by order of the corporate executives because it would impact sales. The bottom line, 
of the financial equation is sales, not death and suffering. This is malicious and must not be allowed. It's like ignoring a factory that is dumping poisonous carcinogen chemicals into the community water. That's not right. It would not be tolerated. At first, I never advise my patients to stop smoking. I do ask for them to stop smoking the additive tobaccos and switch to a non-additive brand. The goal is for my patients to go through the withdrawals from the additive lace tobacco. I've heard of a hundred times of my students and smokers reducing from one to two packs a day to half a pack a day by just getting off of the additives. Some have quit altogether just by getting off the laced brands. By the way, do not give up when you're experiencing the withdrawal side effects of the cough and harsh taste of the non-additive tobacco. Your lungs will adjust to coming off the smoothing, soothing chemicals, making it so easy to inhale. That is why new smokers start the more popular brands as they're chemically tuned to make it easier on the lungs. Other withdrawal side effects coming off of these chemicals may be headaches, nausea, and mood changes. Their profits are more important than your life and health. Yep, they are making a killing. I know what you've done. And I know what you're doing. You sell a product that contains addictive chemicals. So your customers stand little or no chance of ever being able to stop using it. Slowly, over time, it kills one third of them. To replace those dead customers, you tried to market your product to kids as young as 13. The fact is, you get 89% of your new business it's from teens. I've seen the proof. It's in your own words. On your own letterhead. Stamped top secret. You screwed up when you tried to hide the documents. And now they're on the web. They're on the web. I lost my grandfather. My grandmother was manipulated by your lies for years. My grandfather died because of your product. Was the money you made worth it? You've gotten rich selling a product that kills over 1,200 people a day. Every day. So while you're lounging around your comfortable house, watching this message, look into my eyes. I know what you did. And I know what you're doing. And that's, that's why, why I, I got, got involved. involved. And I won't stop until everyone else knows what you're doing, too. We're now entering Marlboro country. And the Cowboys. Hey, hey, what's up? Doing? We're here to see the Cowboys? Who's that? The Marlboro Man. Marlboro Man. Yeah, well, here? Well, he passed away some time ago. He's dead? He passed away? Yeah. Is his horse still alive yeah, or anything? No. no. No Cowboys going no, up there? Could you give us directions maybe to the grave? Okay. That's no guy. Yeah, exactly. yep. All the way to cowboy country, there's no cowboys. And he's dead! And I wonder what killed him. <laughs> yeah. Alrighty, biochemical genetic engineering is being practiced on tobacco smokers and dippers without their knowledge or permission with a neural manipulating marketing scheme called chemical brainwashing. And essentially the drug sells itself by reprogramming your brain. Or in another words, of putting it, you might say you become their bitch, your biochemically infected tobacco consuming human. Tobacco companies do not care if they're causing cancer and death around the world. Just sales, bottom line. Well. Tobacco companies involved in lacing their products with chemicals are lying that nicotine was not addictive at all. Not any more than eating Twinkies is. Well, think about it, because basically, it's a bunch of horseshit. Our prime purpose in this life is to help others. And if you can't help them, at least don't hurt them. Hello, cartoon images of me have been used to sell cigarettes. This is an outrage against me, my family, and my lovely wife, Phyllis. You never find a cigarette in my mouth, a tasty dentist lot maybe, but never a cigarette. They're bad. Camel smoking, outrageous. Get the nail, I can't even light a mud. Education. Gentlemen, the most wicked side effect of smoking tobacco that men will be cursed with is impotence. For some of those that do not know what that means, it's erectile dysfunction. 
well, the education of the program here is to make sure you get the picture of basically, dude, your hardware becomes software. Oh yeah, ladies, choose your man wisely. <laughs>